procurement, program and control. As a small biz pro, I so we grow. Using procurement, program and control. I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh yeah, I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh yeah, I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Business Zone with Crystal and Coach Gilbert Buchanan, your small business paramedic. And folks, today we're going to have an amazing show. We got a super guest here today <laughs> who we can't wait to bring on to share her wisdom with you guys. If you guys are ever thinking or was curious of social media and whether or not it can bring you money well today we've got the answers for you so in a few minutes we'll bring her on so she can tell you guys everything you need to know and you can start growing whatever your dreams and desires are so Cole, <laughs> how are you doing i'm good it's, it was a busy week man i i felt like i got uh, I earned every dime that uh, I'm paid. Uh, I, I'm exhausted today. It was like, wow, look, I have no clients. I mean, it was back to back to back to back. I, I, I was running to grab something to eat. I then then I then I finished it up with uh, classes every night. Uh, last night was the last one. It was it's been it was a brutal week, man. <laughs> you know, actually, I think the opposite calls when. Whenever I have a lot of work to do, Ben, and my plate get filled up, I'm going, man, I'm not charging enough. <laughs> <laughs> I need to charge some more because all this work is piling up on me, man. I should be charging uh, more than I'm charging right now. So that's that's how I try to sort mine out. Yeah, but then, but however, the people that we are actually uh, servicing Serving, yeah. don't quite have that same aff affinity to you, but you're being charged more, <laughs> you charging true. more. So that's, that's just that, right? It is what we do. But yeah. I mean, I love what I do. I yeah. love helping and I love, um, I love just being an entrepreneur and I love sharing with the knowledge that I have, yes. but sometimes boy, so this was, this is one of those weeks that it was uh it was quite busy it was <laughs> well, quite busy well i think because you just came back from a vacation they feel like they should load you up with work cuz they're going who does she think she is going on vacation leaving us alone <laughs> to suffer and not getting what we need to have done so <laughs> you, you actually might have a point there that i think they're punishing me for taking remember i took two Three, vac yes. well, three vacations and a business trip. So yeah, you, did, you did that back to back to back. So they're going, man, she's having too much fun. We need to start taxing her and make her do some more work for us. Yeah. So I think that's what it was. They're punishing me because they, man, they were no joke this go round. So I will not be going. I was supposed to be going out of town um, next week, but I'm not going to be able to make too much stuff. I got too much stuff going on. Because you know that when you come back, you're going to have three times the amount of work waiting for you, huh? Exactly. So I'm going to hold it off until January. I'm going to yeah. be on be around Christmas in January. Uh, I'm going to go. I think I'm going to go hang out with my cousin in uh, Tennessee. For yes. her birthday right. and then of course tax season starts so i can't do anything until after may that's yeah. that's the next time i can take a vacation so i, I deserve it man i work uh, hard <laughs> you, you deserve it man you deserve it. like i say i call you superwoman because you it's like you're wearing a cape flying around here all the time doing all kinds of stuff <laughs> stuff that no ordinary person can do so hey I give you all your props, co hosts. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. But they they yeah. But it was it was a good week. I did yeah. some things. I'm um hosting uh the Los Angeles Urban League is having a um uh business pitch competition for uh some of my clients as well as some other of the clients. So uh that's gonna happen in November. Everybody has something going on. I got classes, yeah. new new programs starting. So from now on to the end of the year. <sighs> It's going to be busy. Wow. So I'm sharing a table with uh, Bianca on November 2nd. They're having awesome. this, uh, the minority, National Minority Business Development Council. They're having a dinner 
on that day. So she asked me to be at her table. So I'll be there checking it out, seeing what's going on. So November 2nd, man. Okay. That's where I'll be. It's going to be at one of those hotels downtown LA. I just don't have the name of it right now. Okay. Well, good. Well, you know, it's our season now. Everybody's going to start having events. I'm already getting invitations. Yes. I'm still not quite uh, uh, the crowd goer just yet. Yes. Um, so what can I say? I hear um, that. Yeah. So, for those of you who are just tuning in, if this is your first time, my co-host is going to tell you how to welcome you to this program. But if, if this isn't your first time and you're an existing viewer, an existing uh, listener, I would like to welcome you back and thank you for being here today. And I hope you did see our, our announcement, our alerts with our very special guest today, because she's got a lot of words of wisdom for you guys. So this is just an amazing show. So this is The Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert. We're on every Friday from 3 to 4.30. And uh, you can um, check us out on YouTube. And you can also check us out on Facebook and LinkedIn. And we've got some goodies that you guys can use for your business from time to time. But uh, my calls will tell you a little bit more about it. So, so when you're, while you're over there watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Or as Gilbert says, uh, if the subscribe button scares you to death, then try to follow. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but it really doesn't cost you any money. And you guys are getting us between the two of us. We have over uh, 60 plus years of, uh, or somewhere close of yeah. uh, experience and you get it for free because we don't yes. come free anywhere else. That's so you right. get it for free. So hit the subscribe button. Uh, you can uh, take a picture of the QR code right there and that will take you over to our YouTube channel. Go tell a friend. And with that, Gilbert, let's jump into our show today. I'm excited. All righty. I can can't wait to get our guest on, guys. All righty. So we're going to do that. We're going to come back and do the, uh, at the end, we're going to do Small Biz Pro. How about that? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll show you guys a little promo, a little promo about our platform, our back office platform that you guys can use to run, grow, and um, uh, utilize the skills in it to expand your business, become business ready, contract ready, and loan ready. So we'll show you that a little later on in this show. All right. Sounds good. Hey, Michelle, glad to have you, my my sister, you know, Michelle Cam um, Morbell. Uh, she's, hey, uh, she's hey Michelle Morbell. Right Hey, Michelle, and uh, change up what now what this is. Uh, she's here uh, or they are here uh, to, to, uh, to um, listen to Doc Coach T. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All righty. So let's get started. Gilbert, I'm excited. I was uh, happy when you in, when you invited uh, Miss Brittany DK on because yeah. she's an, she's doing some some amazing stuff online uh, uh as as my friend armand says uh she's doing that digital entrepreneurship which is where the new phase the the, the where the real money's been made with least amount of effort <laughs> 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 unlike us yeah. <laughs> so um so i'm here just, to learn today I am me as well as I am as well. So with that, I am going to bring her on and we are excited and you all should be listening because, you know, a lot of our people are um, always um, uh, re re um, resistant to the internet, right? They, 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 they are like, I don't need to have a Facebook page. I don't need to be on Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so with that, Welcome, welcome. We are so happy to have you, Brittany. Hello, thanks for having me. Glad you're here. So let me tell everyone a little bit about you. Um, Brittany DK, she's a multi-talented individual with diverse skill sets in fashion design, photography, science, and business. And throughout her career, she's had an opportunity to work with a number of celebrities. But more than that, she's been able to take a skill set and she's been able to monetize that skill set, not in the traditional way that we think about uh, um, when we go to school in fashion and business. We think about the old, let's go out and 
build up and create and sew up all these garments and sell them and, and, and take in a whole lot of loans in yeah. order to support that business. Yeah. But she has found another way to do it. And I'm excited. So with that, uh, Brittany, I am going to turn it over to you. Please kind of give us some insight of what what started this journey and the passion and then where you are today. Yeah, I've been creating content online for over a decade now. So it's been over 14 years. And um, in the beginning, it was fun. It was a hobby. Um, but as time progressed, I realized there was an opportunity in the creator economy. Um, so that's when I learned about monetizing and um, just figuring out different ways that I could make money as a creator. And I think the great thing about social media is you can make money off of things that you're passionate about. Um, it's so many opportunities now that are that wasn't available over 10 plus years ago, but by me being visible on social media, it has definitely opened up so many doors for me. And um, I'm just really, really grateful. Awesome. So, um, cause this is not the traditional way. Most people would go, okay, I'm going into fashion. I have a number of friends that are in fashion. So they created a, a clothing line. Uh, they went through the process of trying to get it funded, uh, trying to decide it, that point, they're going to be brick and mortar somewhere. And I still have multiple clients that are, are doing the brick and mortar piece, you know, playing at the online piece. So what did someone direct you that way? Or it was just because it was brand new? <laughs> yeah, not at all. Um, I'm always doing creative, different things than majority of the people that I'm around or people that I meet. And um, I know for me, it was just great to see positive feedback when I was putting out content on social media. So when I started to show people things that I was learning or things that I was teaching myself, um, I was able to expand my brand. And then also sometimes people would donate so I could buy more fabric to keep creating and showing them new techniques. So that's honestly one of the ways that I funded the business before um, monetiz monetization was out. Okay. Okay. Uh, so did someone teach you about the mon? Cause you know, that's like a secret in the <laughs> industry. <laughs> so how'd you uh, fall into the secret? <laughs> yeah. So one thing I can tell you is um, from the outside looking in, some people think it's easy, but it really just depends on what you do. It took a long time to get here. And that's why I'm so passionate about teaching other people so that they don't have to spend the next five to 10 years trying to figure it out but it took me years to get to this point where I could just have full control of my time. Um, but I remember in the beginning, of course, I was just putting out the content for free. And then when monetization came out, I was like, oh, wow, I get to get paid for the content. This is great. And so the money was coming in and the first paycheck was about $500. And I was like, wow, if I got $500 now, just imagine if I have more followers. But once I got to um, more followers and more viewers, the money was less. And it was because of different factors. Like if people are watching the ads on your video, are they engaging? How long are they watching your video? So many things factor into what your overall revenue would be. And I did not know that back then. So I kept creating anyways, but after a while, I couldn't keep up with it because creating garments costs money. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it costs money. And so I kind of got depressed a little bit and I stopped creating for a while. And you'll notice that on my channel, there's a gap in between the upload time. Okay. And I remember um, being so depressed. I was crying to my mom because I was also trying to find a job so I could fund this channel and do the things I wanted to do. And I remember just crying to her. And I'm just saying like, why would God give me these gifts and talents if I can't make money from it? Mm -hmm. And she was just like, baby, you're going to be okay. Just leave it in God's hand. I'm like, look at her being all positive when I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you, mama? What, what right. Mama? How dare you? <laughs> but I just, you know, something told me to keep going. So it wasn't until I got a phone call from my aunt. Um, she didn't know my situation because at this point, my bank account was in the negative. It was actually hard for me to find work after I got my college degree. And yeah. I was just like at my lowest point. But she called me and she said, God told me to give you this thousand dollars. I just sold some land and I'm going to give you a thousand dollars. And I hope to see you make it. That was what she said, because she knew I was trying to start my fashion business. Mm -hmm. And I just started bursting out and crying. And that's when I started um, really taking my YouTube channel a lot more seriously. And so I bought a whiteboard from online 
And then okay. I looked at my channel. And I'm like, how do I have all these followers? But I can't even do this full time. Ah. And so I looked at my whiteboard and I put in the center of my circle, I put YouTube. And I was looking at all the ways I was making money. And I started to ask myself, which I think everybody should do, is how do millionaires become millionaires? And I realized I only had one stream of income and it was inconsistent. It was up and down, up and down. And so from there, I looked at that whiteboard, which is right next to me as I'm talking to you guys. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, let's create seven to 10 streams of revenue for this YouTube channel. So I started plotting out all the different ways I was going to make money. And I had strategies behind every single way. So I went from making barely $100 to six figures to seven figures. And I just been able to bless my family and, and pour into the community of like Inglewood and Compton with all the money that I made from YouTube. So that's just a little short condensed story of oh, how I got here. That's pretty awesome because, you know, uh, the multiple streams, Gilbert knows this is my mantra to all of my entrepreneurs. You cannot have one revenue stream <laughs> and, and be successful because if that one dries up, what the heck happens to you, right? Everything else dries up. So I have a friend and uh, Cliff Pierre is on and, and we small world. I know Cliff as yeah, well. So we have a mutual friend, uh, Dr. Rosie. And Dr. Rosie says, she has a revenue stream for every uh, obligation mm -hmm. or debt obligation she has. So that's what I say. Everyone should have a multiple uh, multiple revenue streams to cover every debt stream that you have to make sure that when one is not working, the other one can pop hop right on in, you know, with some tweaking, of course. Uh, so uh, kudos to you. <laughs> you know, so that's it's amazing, uh, Brittany, that a lot of folks, they start businesses, they launch businesses because they have a dream, they have an idea, and they think that's how they're going to become rich or generate a large amount of wealth. It's Sometimes it's never usually that way. It's yeah. sometimes it's the things that you least expect, something you didn't give any credence, just like you. This isn't something that you had planned in your life. It wasn't part of your entrepreneurial journey or your career journey you just decide to uh let me see what this is about uh, let me check it out and bam look at that mm -hmm. from six to seven figures <laughs> i gotta give you my respect today i gotta <laughs> give you my respect because this is not easy to come by it's well, not the, easy so the, the one thing she did say is that colleges don't focus on you being entrepreneurial. Oh no, oh you no, working in a corporate, oh world, no, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so. That, that's a part of the system <laughs> to keep you chained that to the true. man, yep. <laughs> keep you chained to the man. So, you keep you keep getting those guys rich while we keep staying poor. Uh uh, we, we've been breeding and fostering a new breed of folks in our, in our society, and we call them entrepreneurs. So we've been teaching them, even Crystal is doing this right now. She got these youth that she's working with, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old. And we're teaching them, hey, if you really need to go to college, if you're going to become a doctor, a lawyer, or, or, or someone in that type of uh, in, in environment that needs a, a six-year degree, then maybe you can start building yourself and, and training yourself for that. But if you're going to become an entrepreneur, I'd rather people become entrepreneur than to go work for the man. So you can go to a two-year college, get mm -hmm. some academics behind your belt. And then after that, you start taking courses like Crystal and I offer or other entrepreneurs offer. Because the entrepreneurs are the ones who really know what's going on in the trenches. Not those professors in these colleges who are reading from books that's written by someone else who was never an entrepreneur. You see what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> and I like the way that you actually sat down and mapped it out to create strategy. Because um, even my business owners that actually have a brick and mortar or a product that they're selling, uh, it's usually about that product, right? They don't think mm -hmm. about the other avenues yeah. that, and, and definitely there's no strategy in place. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me, what are some of the ways that one can monetize online? Yeah. So one is every platform nowadays have a creator program, but you got to see what those requirements are. So since we're on YouTube, the requirements are right now, in order for you to monetize the video itself, you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time within a year, mm. or 
10 million video views from your YouTube shorts in the last 90 days. So, you know, you might put out a short clip that's 30 seconds and it might go viral. You never know. Yes. That will be your gate in the door, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so um, besides that, there's fan funding. Um, there's all these different revenues. Some people do um, merch where you can attach a store to your YouTube or yeah. your social. There's all these different ways, but... Um, you can also look into affiliate marketing as well, which anybody can sign, even if you have zero followers. Yeah. Affiliate marketing is the way to go. Amazon is perhaps one of the best programs to be mm -hmm. into uh, so that you can start making money during this holiday season because everybody's going to be shopping. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when we say um, uh, the thousand subscribers, which for us is like been, we, well, we had, <laughs> I, I think if we, when, I, and I was telling Brittany that when we were in a studio, we had just started out. We were doing yeah. mass marketing. Everybody was loving us, but all yeah. our numbers went to the studio. Yeah. So now streaming live, you know, a different animal. So now trying <laughs> to go back and pull those people in is like pulling teeth. So yeah. without, without, first of all, they can come to your class and learn all yeah. of the, the, the yeah. secrets, right? But just kind of give us an, what are some strategies <laughs> to, to get <laughs> these people to hit the subscribe button? Yeah. Yes, I think when I hear you telling me how you're getting people, I wouldn't focus on the people that were previously <laughs> subscribed. I would focus on the people that's already here on YouTube. Okay. And that's with you understanding how to reach them. So your titles is going to be important. Your thumbnails, your description, and also looking at your AVD, which is your average view duration to see how long people are watching your content. Um, because if you know if they're watching for more than like 40 or 50% of the content, that means that they're really, really enjoying it. And you give them more of that. Um, okay. But I think all that ties into a great channel. Because one thing about YouTube, for instance, it's a search engine. And if people cannot find your content, or if you're not the Beyonce's of this world, then we're just, <laughs> you know, like people don't know me. Like, I mean, I got a following, but I'm not Beyonce. <laughs> right. So she could title whatever she want for her video, but it's Beyonce. So she's always getting found on YouTube. But for us, yeah. we got to title it for keywords that people are searching for. <laughs> hey, co-host, co-host, Br Britain to say, when you tell me about your little pitiful approach that you're using, <laughs> Going after, going after subscribers. No, that's not how we do it. <laughs> she said, well. I'm taking notes, Gilbert. I'm taking oh, notes. man, that's, that's good, man. That's good. Because we want to learn, Brittany. We want to learn. We want to be an influencer just like you. Absolutely. And And our level of influence and may come in a different way because we reach out to entrepreneurs. So things that we say, little nuggets that we pass on every week, uh, it might, it might imp um, impact one entrepreneur here or over there, but yeah, you know, we'll slowly but, get them. <laughs> but it's funny, Brittany, Gilbert and I, or I'll go out and I'll speak in some event and there, and folks will be, I was in the supermarket one time after we, about the second or third year we were on the air and someone come running all the way from the other side of the supermarket and run, you're crystal. And I'm like, oh uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I was like, oh, okay, and how do you know me? I right. saw your show. And I'm thinking, okay. Wow. So and then when I when I'm at you know my events and I'm speaking, they'll go like Gilbert, he's amazing. So we have this fanfare. <laughs> We're on our own little superstars in our own little world. We just can't get them on YouTube. <laughs> we just need to we need to monetize them though. That's what we need to do here. So um so so we're here to listen to whatever you have to tell us. You're the expert right now. You're the expert. So we're you know, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, there's someone, uh, uh, Change Up asked, does hashtags in the title work or just hashtags in the description? It's oh, both. Okay. Both? Yes. So, so the title hashtags, if you use a hashtag, let's say you want to brand your... Um, your company or you wanted to bring more brand awareness to a merch, like the mm -hmm. particular name, you can use yeah. a hashtag in this uh, title or the description. Yeah. And what YouTube will do is create a, uh, a segment, a sector on the platform for your hashtag. So when people are using it, you'll find all the videos that have that hashtag. So it's another way to get found in search. Mm, okay. Very good. I 
I've been using a, um, uh, I think it's called uh, Vid IQ, and so it kind of gives me uh, suggestions for the title and mm -hmm. for the um, the keywords to put in the description of yeah. the body. And so that has helped a lot. I mean, I've actually subscribed to a number of tools to, so at least I, I, I'm on the right page. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you learn this? Because, you know, a number of years ago, this it, we saw people growing and, you know, Mr. Beast and all these individuals right. that are doing incredible things online. But again, like I said, it's like a secret society. So did, how did you get to the secret society? <laughs> I had to teach myself a lot of things that I know today because we didn't have all these tools. We didn't have the vidIQ or any of that stuff or any of these AI tools to make our life a lot easier. So um, like if you look on YouTube, it shows your analytics. We didn't have that. So I had right. to figure out what my audience liked and what they didn't like by surveying them. Um, so it's really just being self-taught and then trying out different things to see what's going to work. But I think um, nowadays, because we have all the tools in the palm of our hands and a lot of them are free, it could definitely help you. But most of the great tools are within the platform itself. So one thing you told me was like with titles, you use vidIQ. I love vidIQ. I think it's great. But YouTube also give you titles too in your analytics. So there's a tab that says research. And I'm not sure if you guys ever used that before. No, I've never used that one on YouTube. I got tubed up, buddy, on, but I've never, I, I, I've tried everything, oh. but no, not YouTube. <laughs> yeah, so the research tab is going to tell you, based off the data that they collected from your channel, what your own subscribers are searching for. So wow. if you already know what your own audience is searching for, just make it a lot easier to create the content that they're also, you know, searching for on YouTube. So that's one way. The other way, too is definitely using um, Google Bard. And the reason why I love Google Bard because they own YouTube. So you already know that it's all tied together. <laughs> so if you okay. want to get found on not just YouTube, but the World Wide Web, uh -huh. then Google Bard is going to be a great platform to come up with some titles. And then the last tool I would suggest is Google Trends because a lot of my videos are found on the internet. So when people would search up like, Beyonce inspired gown. My videos from YouTube kept popping up on Google search. Really? And that's how, yeah, and that's how I was getting booked for prom dresses. Mm. Oh, so, so, so it did help. Uh, and that's what I was you know, what I was telling her initially. We weren't really concerned about the monetiza monetization. Monetization. I right. was using it for a marketing tool, and yeah, I will yeah. say that it has worked extremely well uh, as a market. So you too. Uh, that was one of those strategies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Wow. These, so these are definitely great nuggets you're sharing with us, Brittany. I, I really, really appreciate this. No and I just want to share with our audience, if you're just tuning in, this is The Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert. We're on every Friday from 3 to 4.30. If you're browsing through YouTube, just type in The Business Zone. You'll see this wonderful lady on here schooling us on how to how to get our social media up and that's something we, we really need to know uh, i mean most of us out there we we get on uh youtube and we do whatever we do not knowing it's like it's like going we're navigating you're going through the desert and you don't have a plan you're just navigating and you go okay where's the water and you're just walking like crazy so, so she is providing us a roadmap, guys so that we can know how to navigate through that desert and find that water in the social media space. So Brittany, you know, I do the entrepreneur program. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was wonderful to hear that your, your sister was involved, was in one of my, in my class, I guess I would imagine it was this fall, uh, mm -hmm. this summer. So I'm always talking to the kids because, you know, <laughs> most of my kids come to me because we, the whole premise is to come up with an idea, uh, Make sure that idea is feasible to make money. And uh, you, generally, I get T-shirts. I get lip gloss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will get some skin care. And then I look at them and I go, wow, you guys are on, on, inter on social media and the internet probably 85% of your day. And if right. you were in, not in school, you'd probably be more <laughs> than that. So why... None of you ever come up with say, I want to be an influencer or I want to do this or I have this hobby and I want to create a massive YouTube channel. 
Uh, so is that just something not being related to kids? And how can I redirect them to think that this is a new economy for them? Yeah. So um, funny enough, I have siblings that are teenagers. They're young and they've seen my success on social media and they consume just as much as you just mentioned, right? 85% of their day is on social media. However, with my success and their time consumed on social media, they are not interested. And the reason why is because they see the work that I do for myself. You got to set up the camera. So at this point, you're the film crew. You're the yeah. voiceover person. <laughs> you're the talent. You're the edit. It's a lot of work. And I don't oh. think, you know, people don't think about that. And then you have yeah. to edit the video and all that. It's yeah. a lot of work. So if you're not yeah. going to be consistent, you won't be successful at it. Yeah, that's true. This uh, whole content stuff is for everyone. Anybody can do it. I work with clients that are 60 plus and they're making money full time. However, mm. if you know you can't commit to creating content, then yeah. you just will not succeed in this creator economy. Okay, so it's really about continuity. Uh, and, you know, Gilbert and I, that's one of the things, the people that do follow us, we've been consistent for seven years. And uh, I have another podcast that I launched. Um, and it's, uh, I, I do it, I've been doing it for four years and it's on Zoom, but it has a different focus. It's on the community yeah. and, but we're growing uh, in that platform and I can control the viewership because they have to sign into Zoom. So I know okay. who's coming in. Yeah. I can, I can see who's falling off of my, my YouTube, uh, my, Zoom, my uh, 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 email list. And I can go like, Hey, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> I take it personal, man. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, so that one I control. I've actually got something else in the hopper. I was just telling Gilbert this morning. I love you. I love podcasting. You yeah. know, yeah. even without making money, I just absolutely love the whole camera thing and yeah. and the creativity that and share, sharing that. sharing the knowledge and the wisdom. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, Okay, so I just got to figure out how the kids can utilize theirs because I think this is a fantastic space for them. Uh, what we're trying to do is keep them from incurring, like yourself, all those school loans. You know, yeah. figure out how you can make some money to keep you from having to spend a quarter of a million dollars to go to school. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I always tell people if you want to get into this, start off with things that you're passionate about. Because mm -hmm. it makes it easier when you're creating content, you're having fun. Yeah. And also, I always tell people, like, do it for the right reasons. Because some people jump into this whole cre content creation for money. And I was doing this before they were paying people. So that lets yeah. you know how much I enjoyed it. <laughs> right, 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 right. But then right. The, getting paid is like the reward of putting in all the work. But it's not something like a job you apply for and you know you're going to get a paycheck the first week. You got to work up to that. So I just tell people, remember that this is a marathon and not a race because it does take a little time. Well, with us, it's the same thing, because when we started, we started as a radio program. So mm -hmm. we're, we're working out of a small radio station downtown L.A. And then the pandemic hit. So when the pandemic hit, we were, OK, do we <laughs> still want to spread our message or do we put it on hold? So, you know, Crystal and I talk and say, no, you know, let's keep sharing our, our wisdom. Let's yeah. let's do the podcast. That that's how the podcast was born. You know, we yeah. really didn't plan on doing this podcast. We wanted to continue doing the, the radio show. Yeah, being but, in the studio. Yeah, but this <laughs> happened. This happened and we loved it. You know, we, we we touch a lot of people because we people get back to us and tell us, hey man. You've changed our lives by telling us this, by sharing this information. Oh, by the way, uh, can you send me that link again so I can download it? Or they go to our downloads and they download a lot of our information on how to start a business or something to that effect. So, yeah. 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 And I think a little bit like you. Um, so the story of the business zones is that um, I was on a podcast a radio show. Her name is Mother Love. A friend of mine had set it up. And uh, so I went on Mother Love and I'm like, oh, hey, I kind of like this, man. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I, I, on my way home, my, my girlfriend, my friend called me and she says, so how'd you, how did you like it? I said, I think this is fantastic. I said, I think I can do this. Mm -hmm. And so she says, oh, really? So when? I'm like, well, wait a minute. I just walked out the <laughs> studio. <laughs> So I don't have a date and a time. So she she forced me to give her a date and time. So I gave her a date and time. It was like July 7th or 8th that I was on this show. So I said, okay, let's do it one year from the day. 
So I went on about my business. It's like at that time, trying to figure out, did I want to be in a studio? We, I want to be in a studio. And at this point, it was just me. Uh, do I want to? What did that look like? Like you just said, do I have to set up cameras and lighting and yeah. get microphones? It's like, whoa, that seems like way <laughs> too much. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work. So it just so happened the young lady that runs the studio came to another meeting that I was having. And she was talking about her studio. And I was doing some other stuff, so I kind of have heard. She called me back and she said, you need to come to my studio. Uh, this would be perfect for you because you, like, excel in this space. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'll get there. I'll get there. So one day she called me. It was a Friday. She said, what are you doing right now? I said, uh, nothing, actually. She said, come to my studio. It's not too far from my house. Come to my studio right now. And I go down there and I went, oh, my God, wh why haven't I gotten here sooner? This is like three <laughs> months since she had told me about this. Wow. So then I was like, OK, yeah, I could do this. And she's been in the in uh, radio business for over her, between her and her father over 50 years. So she could take me through the, the learning curve. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, but I don't want to be the only person. I want someone to feed off. I do better when I'm feeding off of somebody else. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I got to find some people. So I'm going through my, my repertoire of people. And uh, I happened to run in Gilbert. We were teaching. He was upstairs teaching a class. I was teaching a class downstairs. He asked me, do you want to, hey, I got a project coming up. Do you want to uh, uh, teach this class for me? And then I said, yeah, maybe. And he says, and I said, I got, I'm thinking of a podcast. What do you think about that? <laughs> and that's that's kind of how we got, we came together. Aww. And um, so I take it, he, I invite him to the studio. He sees yeah. it. He said, this is fantastic. Let's make this happen. Right. So uh, she says, okay, so well, let's, let's find a date. And so she says, so open up your calendars. And I open up my calendar and she says, well, what do you think? I said, well, this will take six, about six weeks to market, mm -hmm. get everything, the legalities together. Cause both of us are about, you know, setting up a real business. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, let me see. So that was in May. I said six weeks, that will be July 8th. <laughs> and that's the date. And so my girlfriend called me when I sent the ma uh, the mass marketing out. She says, you yeah. do realize that's the date you told me a year ago. Wow. So it kind of manifested itself. Right. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, Again. We, and we've been doing this ever since. I right. love it. Yeah, yeah, so that's kind of our story. And so monetizing wasn't part of it, but now right. monetizing has to be part of it. <laughs> no. Oh, absolutely. One thing I can tell you is one thing you mentioned was like, how can we become influencers? When I look at you guys and I've known the work that you've done for the city of LA and things outside of the city of LA, you have more influence than people that have millions of subscribers. Wow. And it's because you're constantly getting people signed up for these classes and they're taking actions, they're following up with you. Yeah. If you look at your database, you have a roster of a thousand plus people on there, That's right? True. That's it's true. so much you can do. You can use that as leverage to start monetizing today without waiting to have the X amount of followers for YouTube. So mm -hmm. what I mean by that is use what you have already done in your local community, and then you can start small, like reaching out to brands and saying, hey, we work with thousands of entrepreneurs. Would you be willing to sponsor us for not only our podcast, but also the stuff that we're doing in the city of LA? Just oh. having a conversation like that, there's so many companies that will definitely like definitely, <laughs> how you confident know, I am. They will know, definitely pay you. <laughs> you know, I feel like a student right now, man. Just learning. <laughs> this is amazing. You know, usually, Crystal, you and I were we're the ones teaching and coaching yeah, small businesses. Yeah, I'm ready to sign but, up right but, now. Yeah, I'm to sign up. <laughs> yeah. To, today, this is just amazing. I, I'm just, you know, how quiet I am back here, right? <laughs> Cliff, Cliff says she's speaking the truth. Yeah, because you know yes, I've took Cliff. classes with you guys. My little sister have, and you guys definitely know what you're talking about. Yeah. But on top of that, you have helped thousands of people and yeah. if people were to see that you know the brands that probably don't know who you are yeah you have the body of work to showcase that and you have your business outside of that yeah. so they will be more than you know excited to like really work with you mm -mm -mm. Well, thank you for that that's see, what we need see that's a good perspective because we never really look at it that way we're <laughs> we're always looking at a different kind of way and that's why it's always good to have someone on the outside looking in to kind of 
paint a picture for us. Yeah. This is great, man. So yeah. if, if I don't learn or benefit from anything else that you're telling me on this podcast, <laughs> what you just said right now is amazing. That's an amazing piece of nugget right there. And yes. Cliff, Cliff the CEO said, she coaches me too <laughs> and, and is helping me understand and maximize YouTube. Man, Cliff, she is she's a gem, man. We got to keep her, Cliff, we got to keep her. Can't let her go anywhere else. <laughs> so, so as a creator, um, and I see on your YouTube, you're called the doctor of fashion or Dr. Fashion? Yep, Dr. Fashion. Okay, so how did that, so I know your passion and it's all about passion, right? So exactly what happens on your, your podcast and... Yeah, so I do have several channels, um, but most of them are faceless. Um, so I have like a science channel, history, and a, a pop culture. But really? the Dr. Fashion is the one people know me for because my face is on there. But on that channel, I do have a podcast where I teach people how to make money with the tutorials that I'm showing them. So if I'm showing you how to make a dress, I'm going to show you how you, you can make money from that dress that we made. Oh, so wow. everything that I talk about ties back into the DIY. So I give people another reason to stay on my channel. So I'm very strategic about everything I do. And that's why I've been successful on YouTube because I made the assumption when I started, well, my following count will determine what my net worth would be because I made assumptions that people that had millions of followers, they were making bank until yeah. I got in that space and they was like, yeah. girl, I'm broke. I was like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what you mean, bro? They said, I am not making anything. I was like, well, uh, I got to figure something out. Because if you got millions and you broke, <laughs> yeah, because that, that's the assumption that, okay, I get those thousand views or those, and, and I get 300 or a million followers yeah. that the money is just automatically oh, going yeah. to be there, but it's not, right? No, it's just so many things that factor into it. Like, at least in regards to YouTube, one of the reasons why some people were broke, it was so many factors from creators that I talked to. One is financial literacy, not understanding mm. what to do with the money after they yes, earn it, yeah, you know? Yeah, so I was yeah. like, oh, I learned from that person. Let me not make that mistake. Yes. And that's when I started investing in real estate. Yeah. The other thing too is your CPM. So mm -hmm. CPM is the cost per million or the cost per thousand on YouTube. This is what mm -hmm. advertisers are paying per thousand of you. Yeah. For you guys, because you're in the business space, you yeah. have the highest CPM on YouTube. On average, it's about 30 to $60 per thousand view once you get monetized. Really? So you, when y'all get there, take you later. <laughs> <laughs> Man, really? <laughs> co host this is like we've been sleeping for the last 60 years or so. Yeah, but we're hiring Brittany. She's <laughs> yeah, oh, host. for sure, for sure. Um, we got to hire yeah, her. Yeah, because, sure. wow. Um, and I bet I have a friend, uh, he's really big on the whole entrepreneur, digital entrepreneurship, that's what he calls it. And so mm -hmm. we, a year ago, and I actually, before the pandemic, we did a whole year pilot where we were introducing our community uh, yeah. to digital entrepreneurship. It didn't cost him anything. He's a major digital uh, uh, marketer himself. And so he does it through blogging. So he actually was walking everyone through the process of creating a blog and how to monetize the blog uh, from the five years. And the same, same, same with, mm -hmm. with YouTube. So they were fighting him on all the way on all of the topics he was saying to stay in that lane because that's how that's how you monetize and yeah. they're all over the place so finally he has finally created his course in the curriculum so he yeah. has a core of about 25 people who have all become monetized because oh, now wow. they fell in line yeah. <laughs> yes. they fell in line but his is he talks about more about uh, the blogging and, 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 you know, getting the blog out. And then if you want to have a podcast or what have you, you know, it, you augment that with that. So that's how he does it. So he's been big on that. And so I've been working with him and I was like, man, that this is what I want to do. I, I don't want to do all this other stuff. I want to do this. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's like amazing. I love how, you know, there's so many different ways to monetize, even if you're not making videos. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to add to what I mentioned before is for anybody that's listening, make sure you look at your analytics because the longer people watch, if your goal is to make money, that's where the money is at. So for instance, um, if you're monetized on YouTube, let's say you did a 10 minute video and uh -huh. you have ad placements in the video. 
if people are not watching more than 50%, you already lost that on money because they didn't reach the other ads. So people don't think about that. And that's what I learned on YouTube because I was like, I got all these views. Where the money at? You know, <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to where people were starting to drip off. And uh, it's because sometimes my intros were too long. I'm like, hey, guys, like I did this on a Sunday. And they like, they don't want to hear that. I just get straight into the <laughs> <laughs> They don't care. <laughs> but I learned. I learned. And once I learned, I went from making 2 to $5 per thousand view to on average right now is about $50 per thousand views some of my videos have sixty dollars per thousand so i don't have to work as hard to see the income that i want mm -hmm. so let me ask this question so through your 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 time and you and how long you've been on the air it, it sounds like you came in when youtube just kind of started there or, it was kind of in the beginning just i was before, just using it just, for fun just before the pandemic right no oh, that's yeah, i've been on youtube for a decade yeah oh, okay. it's, it's been around a long long time yeah now. So um, before all the analytics and everybody was t tapped into keywords and all that sort of stuff, you what? So were you making? Were you streaming live or were you pre-recorded and then uploading? It was pre-recorded. YouTube didn't really have live stream in the beginning. Um, so the way I started off on YouTube, um, I think this is a great like part to share my story. I didn't have a camera because as a broke college kid, I could not afford one. Okay. And they didn't really have iPhones like that either. I just hate <laughs> myself. <laughs> but anyway, you don't look at you look like you're 14 girl. <laughs> my little sister had a Fisher Price toy camera made out of plastic and it was not high quality, but it that's what you me. use. That's yes. what you use. And oh, I didn't have man. money for a tripod. So what I did was I stashed my I stacked my college book on top of each other and I would try to tilt the camera and that's how i was filming all my videos and i realized for an entire year nobody asked to see my face because they found the content so valuable and so i was faceless for a whole year <laughs> and making money for a whole year without showing my face i could have been anybody wow, <laughs> wow nobody really cared too much because they enjoyed the content so much but when i got money and i was able to buy more equipment i finally showed my face and i was like hey guys you're like, oh, okay, girl, I see you. You're black like me. <laughs> <laughs> you are hilarious, Brittany. <laughs> hey, so so Brittany, what what kind of camera do you use? Um, yeah. Is is it a special camera? Because your your quality looks really sharp and professional. That's why I've been giving you props ever since <laughs> I got on here. Because I love it. It's just bright and effervescent, yeah. you know. Yeah, I do have, so I do photography, so I do have a lot of different cameras, but this one, this camera I'm using right now is the one that I suggest for most creators, especially uh -huh. for you guys, because you do podcasting. Yeah. This is a Canon M50, Canon M50 Mark okay, II. Okay, so you're using a 3D, you're not using a... Um... Oh, yes, okay. I'm using a DSLR with okay. a capture card. So the capture card is what's going, it's like a USB thing, and it's going to showcase what's projecting from the camera. Um, but this is a really great camera because you can actually live stream without plugging it into anything. So really? let's say you guys are on a field trip with the kids and you yeah. want to live stream while you're on the go. <laughs> you can yeah. do that through YouTube without yeah. connecting as long oh. as you have Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, so so it's, it's, it's a Canon Amazon Mary 50, yes. right? Yep. Mark uh, two. You got to get yeah. the Mark two. Yeah, Mark two. <laughs> you know, because I've been looking. I'm going, man, I got to check. Because I have a, um, I have a, um, uh, portable we have a web, camera. We have a webcam. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I'm, the, I'm looking at my picture right now. I'm going, what the hell is that? <laughs> Who's that dude? <laughs> well, for me, is my camera, uh, I use a webcam, but I use, I, I have like studio lighting behind me. Yeah. And then I have a little light on the side of it. And I've just learned, you know, I pretty much all day long, I'm I'm broadcasting on yeah. in some platform. So I've learned what works for me. Um but uh, you know it is. It's, it's so real. Yeah. Uh, so there you go, Gilbert. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta up the game, man. Yeah. Up the game. <laughs> I know. I gotta step up my game, man. And I like your microphone too. Is it a is it a, a unidirectional mic? Yeah. So this is a a nice um, condenser mic. It's a Blue Yeti. Mm -hmm. So this is pretty. I, I would say everything I'm mentioning. Wait for Black Friday. We're almost there. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> But one thing I teach people is how to monetize their life. 
So yeah. when I look at you guys, there's things that are visible where you could be making money or yeah. saving money. Yeah. Maybe the brand doesn't have the budget to pay you, mm -hmm. but they got all the free stuff to give you. Yeah. So when I think about that, like Crystal, think about um, lip gloss or lipstick. The accessories on your hair, the headphones, the mics, all those things can be monetized as a product placement. Like we see those, um, we see product placements in movies and TV shows all the time. Mm -hmm. You could do the same thing. So right now I'm using a Blue Yeti. I even monetize the background. Like this is sponsored, the wallpaper. Oh. Um, and then also the glasses. <laughs> okay, all righty then, girl. Sign, sign, me, sign me up, coach. Sign me up. Sign me up, coach. We will be signing up on Monday, young lady, because you are. The, and, and I, I do a lot of research, and I'm the geek. I'm, a, I'm a quiet. I'm a in the closet kind of geek, even yeah. though, um, you know, you know, I do what I do, but I love the technology piece of it, right? But um, I had not thought about my makeup. Yeah. <laughs> And, and monetize I, that. Yeah, see, I, I not, see, that's why I'm telling you, man, having someone on the outside looking in, they're seeing stuff that we're not even looking at. Do you see yeah, what I mean? I'd be this looking at amazing. everything. Like, it was really hard in the beginning because when I wasn't making consistent income, because, you know, California is expensive. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so I was cashing in bottles and people didn't know that. Like, I was cashing in bottles to pay my phone bill. Wow, I was cashing wow. in bottles to make videos. And I didn't show, I'm not the type to show my life. So nobody saw the ugly side. They just right. made the assumption that yeah. I was doing great because of my yeah. following count. Um, but it wasn't until I was able to make money full time. I was like, you know, I was actually struggling. And it was like, yeah. wow, like I didn't know that, you know. And so having that conversation actually encouraged people to create content because they just thought everything was just looking beautiful for you. Know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, the struggle was real. I was crashing in bottles to get this MacBook I'm talking to you guys on right now. <laughs> See, Cliff, 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 the CEO said, Brittany don't play, man. <laughs> and, and, and Cliff he came knows. back Cliff came back from back east, jumped in his car, him and his dog, and drove across country. Yeah, and, man. And, 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 and has been trying, you know, making it here in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. which ain't no easy. That's what entrepreneurs do, man. You jump yeah. in that deep water, don't even know if you can swim, and you say, hey, I got to figure this thing out. So, and, and, and Los Angeles ain't for weaklings. <laughs> no, no. You know, you know, Cliff. I, I kind of did the same thing you did, Cliff. I jumped in my car, too, and I drove from New York all the way here. It took me like five to six days, man. And then when I got here, when I got to, to California, I'm, oh, shoot, what did I just do? <laughs> Where do I go now? What do I do? <laughs> right. Everything here is expensive. So how do you look at the future of the, the um, creator economy? What does that look like with AI? I mean, everything. I, I think AI is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> but how do you see it enhancing uh, the future of you being a creator yes. uh, on, on social media? And as well, what are some of the challenges you see? Yeah, um, I'll start off with the challenge. One thing I could say is with AI... Um, one thing that a lot of platforms have been trying to um, handle is like deep fake, right? So one thing about AI is you can create a whole person that looks like you, your clone, <laughs> and you oh, can mess Lord. up your brand because you can make it say whatever you want. And oh, I think right. that with a lot of like A-list celebrities, yeah. sometimes mm -hmm. people can't tell the difference. So that's an issue with like certain AIs. But overall, I think it's going to allow us to open up our minds and be a lot more creative and innovative with a lot of like technology and even in our business. And mm -hmm. one thing when AI was kind of like just out there for the public, I was worried. Cause I'm like, Oh, we're going to run out of jobs. And, I'm not <laughs> and then I realized we're not, you know, because <laughs> AI can only go back so far. And yeah. one thing you can't, it can't do is tell your story. So yeah. when I'm coming up with content ideas, they don't know what I did 10 years ago. Yeah. I got to feed that information to yeah. them. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, at the end of the day, it's not a human. Yeah. And so it's only so much you can do. But I think overall, it's going to help us more than anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I, I see it is. If you use it as a tool, like everything else is a tool, yeah. uh, then it then it's very helpful. Um, as I was saying earlier, a lot of our uh, Black population and Black business owners, they're very resistant to social media. You yeah, know, I teach, you know, we have, I have, we have colleagues uh, that are in the marketing space and uh, they don't understand the, 
how to really help use it, utilize it to really help their business. Can you give them some tips on what that would look like and uh, not being afraid of it? I always tell people, you don't have to come in and tell them. And you just said it. They didn't even know who you were for a whole, <laughs> for the beginning of your career on, on YouTube. They didn't even know what you look like. Right. <laughs> you could have been four heads and, and, and some, a horn, <laughs> but they were following you, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think for business owners, um, one thing I could say is if you're not the type where you want to show your face, then you don't have to. Um, just think of different things you can showcase that's going to get people engaged with the content and the products or services that you're providing. So like if you go into like ChatGPT and you say, give me 10 content ideas that are short form videos for a business that do X, Y, and Z, it would do that for you. And that's a start. But with those ideas, it could be faceless. So maybe chat GPT would say, show some behind the scenes of you working. You working does not have to be you in the video. It could just be the point of view of you work. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. so many things you can do in that. But overall, I think what a lot of um, entrepreneurs struggle with is being consistent. Because when I think about showing up on social media, it's kind of like a brick and mortar, right? It's open majority of the time out the week. It's not yeah. closed majority of the time out the week because how are we going to make money if we're closed? <laughs> right, exactly. So it's the same thing on social media is you have to show up for your community. And so I would uh, suggest showing up at least five to seven times out the week. And the best way to do this so you don't burn yourself out is, for one, being very true to yourself and asking yourself how much time can I commit to creating content? Because if you got a nine to five and you're trying to run a business, you probably don't got too much, especially if you got kids. Now, if it's only two or three hours and so be it, but let's maximize those two to three hours. So with that, we could uh, take an hour to plan out the content, take an hour to film the content and take another hour to edit the content. And now you have like a month worth of content if you can knock out like 10 short form videos. So I always tell people just work smarter, not harder. So you just don't burn yourself out. Mm. Mm. And do you um, in the beginning that you um, uh, farm out your editing of your videos or do you do you do that now or do you do all the editing of your videos? I do all of it except for my faceless channels. Okay. Mm. Okay. Cool. 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 And these are really good advice and words of wisdom, man. Uh, we've had a lot of guests on this show, and I'm telling you, you're you're in the top two. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, she, she's given us such amazing nuggets. Oh yeah. And, and this is an area that's kind of uh, um, uh, mysterious to most of us, right? Because, you know, there are other entities that are just, you know, been killing it for a long time. And even to say that they're an influencer, I mean, I, I you know, I know we influence because we've been teaching and training and for, yeah. for you know, last, I mean, me last 30 years, but I don't, I don't actually see myself as that influencer, like, online right mm -hmm. i see yeah. myself as i'm a coach i'm passionate about being an entrepreneur when i was uh just starting out uh i didn't have if i had me <laughs> when i first started out that would be a whole different thing but everybody yeah. i knew were actually working for someone and i kind of stepped out there on my own yeah. um so i i don't see myself that i see myself as the person you know this is my experience I don't want you to make the same mistake I made. Right. You're going to make some your own and that's fine because that's how you learn, right? But I didn't see myself. But now I'm seeing myself in a different light, Brittany. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, you know, there's so much you can do. Like, I was just thinking, like, um, you know, the holidays are coming up. Once again, people are going to be shopping online. And I did mention Amazon for you guys to, like, um, monetize. I'll see you guys that link later. <laughs> but okay. um, I would... My idea, because I have to share this now before I totally forget, is you guys creating a kind of like a digital catalog, right? So, you know, back in the days, like they had the JC Pennies and all mm -hmm. that stuff, and we couldn't mm -hmm. wait for the holidays to get what we want. Um, with the digital catalog, I would suggest you guys sharing the tips that you already share for free, right. but you're putting it in like this ebook format, right? Uh, in that ebook format, will include some of your affiliate products. Because this book is going to be free, but you're yeah. going to make money from something that is free. Yeah. The other thing, too, is the videos. You can put clickable thumbnails of your YouTube videos so that when people are getting these books from your classes or when you're out and about at events, they're flipping through this digital book 
and then they're watching your video, which is helping you rack up your watch time hours because we're trying to get y'all monetized, right? Right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, it's free, but it's like an, a great way for you to make money and then build relationships with brands because they're going to be able to see that you're driving all that traffic to their products. Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So where do we sign up, young lady? <laughs> How do we become your client? <laughs> hey, Fernando. <laughs> well, yeah, we we definitely um because I, you know, I think, but I don't think all that broad that broadly, but you're in this space. So tell me, I was watching um Bel Air, uh, which is the remake of Prince of Bel Air, mm -hmm. and and Hillary who was uh, his cousin, she was, um, a, had become an influencer and, uh, and she was talking about a content house. And I think I read somewhere you, you've uh, started a couple of content houses. So, it yeah, tell, so can you tell me what that is? <laughs> yeah. So most content homes, um, they're just a home that creator utilized to film content together. But in most cases, people live in it too. It's kind of like MTV real world where people right. are like, you know, roommates. But the way I run my content home is like a place of business. Um, so nobody lives in them in the homes. They just utilize it to co-work, to to um, take classes, to um, film their content for their podcast. And we provide them with all the tools that they need. So um, when I created this content home, I was thinking about where I was before I started. I could not afford a camera or a mm -hmm. tripod and all these other things. So when people are booking our content homes, they're able to get everything done because we have everything there. Mm, that's awesome. good. So that's good. Again, that, go ahead, Crystal. Reaching back and helping those just like same thing that I do, right? Yeah. Uh, reaching back from your own experience and, and helping someone else um, bridge that gap uh, to get yeah. to where you are. And we have our newest content home is by the SoFi Stadium. So it's right there on Crenshaw. Um, it's in Inglewood. So you guys can feel free to check us out. Okay, awesome. So, so you got a you got a storefront then? Do you have a storefront? Yeah, so um our website for that is thecontenthome.com. So T H E contenthome.com and you'll be able to see the Inglewood home and um all the pictures from like our events and stuff. So when we're talking to, and there's quite a few people here, uh, with the exception of probably um, of uh, a cliff, when you we, when you say content, what exactly does that mean to that lay person, to that person that's not super savvy in this uh, digital space? Yeah, content could be not only video, but it could be a written, like a blog post or a social media post. It can be audio, such as podcasts. Um, it could be pictures. So when people think of content, most people jump into, oh, yeah, videos. I don't do that. It's like that's not the only way to create content. So just think of all the different visuals and audios that you hear online. Um, that's all different forms of content. Oh, OK. OK. So we actually are all creating content all yeah. the time. <laughs> we, we just don't even know that we are doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a question. What is the one thing that you absolutely love about uh, doing what you do? Um, being able to help people. Okay. When I was thinking of my why as to why I was doing this before I started to become full time, I was like, why am I doing this? I'm like, I really get a joy out of helping people. And then also I get to challenge myself because they're asking for things, sometimes requesting videos of DIYs that I've never done before. So now I have to learn something new. Um, so that's like the main thing. And then I also enjoy the process of creating content like the filming, the editing, it's just so exciting. Um, and I'm happy, like I've been doing this over 14 years, I'm still not tired. I'm like, ooh, creating content today. Like I'm so happy. I'm like, God, you so good. Why are you so good? <laughs> I just That's was so excited, you guys. And I think it's just the journey because once again, it did take a long time to get here. I didn't have anybody, I didn't have a mentor. So I think that's one of the reasons why it took a while. And I, when I started, everybody was still trying to figure it out because the word content creator wasn't really a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just definitely a journey. But I thank God every day I wake up, I'm like, dang, thank you for this. Because now I get to be in these beautiful homes, but it's all the work that I put in to get to this point. 
I, I, I guess it's just, it's like a new twist. You know, I, that's what entrepreneurship is, right? Yeah. You're taking something out of nothing, just a little pile of clay <laughs> and you mold it into something yeah. that, that is feasible and, and, and is a business model <laughs> yeah. and it makes money to take care of you and you get to do what you love to do from a passionate, from a passion uh, place and it becomes your powerful why. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that. So where do you see yourself in say next 10 years in this space you're in? Yeah, um, definitely a doctor. <laughs> so mm -hmm. people think the name Dr. Fashion is like the cute name, like Dr. Dre, which is cool, but he's not a doctor. Mm -hmm. I'm actually in school as a pre-med student and my YouTube channel is what's helped fund that. So awesome. I'm just really, yeah, so I'm just really grateful that I'm able to like not stress about paying for college books. Or, they are very expensive. <laughs> so, <laughs> college is very expensive. Yeah, in general, <laughs> it's so expensive. Um, but I'm able to pay for that due to this channel. Um, it changed my life, that's for sure. But um, yeah, in the next ten years, honestly, in the next five years, I'll be a doctor. And um, one thing that YouTube does when there's a medical professional, they have you submit your credentials so that you're labeled as a physician. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be excited when I'm able to do that. So if I'm giving health tips or yeah. science facts, I don't need yeah. nobody saying, you're not a doctor. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah. that's why there's a science channel then, because I heard yes. that. Yes. How did that fit? Okay. Yeah, oh, I'm a biochemistry <laughs> major too. Check, oh my check, god! Check that my library so now. Good. Check my library. <laughs> <laughs> I got so, the video to prove it. Right. I I just can't wait till that day come where I have that MD next to my name in my All white right. coat. Yeah, um, it's, it's, gonna know, it's gonna yeah, happen. Yeah, my community is rooting for me, and it just makes me excited to continue on with my journey. So I'm excited, y'all. Oh, Fer wow, Fernanda is... said, "I love her already." I, I absolutely and, love her. And she loves the Lord. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this because you know a lot of times we go with you know we're just not happy. I, you know yeah. my nep my nephew uh, uh, went to school to be a uh, a sports. Um, uh, he's in sports management. So he came out, he was trying to figure out because they don't really tell you how to make that journey right from college to here. Yeah. And, but he, he did do his undergrad and, 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 and graduate program all at the same time. So he finished it all up, but he's into sports, but he's about the youth, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, he's finally finding himself, but it's taking him a while uh, to get there because there was no, no pathway. There's no book that yeah. says that. My other nephew is just finishing up film school. Uh, he'll be coming home next month with his degree. Oh. Uh, he wants to be a film director. So he's made his first uh, his first film. We are all executive producers. So we're, you know, pushing it. We don't know what that's going to look like when he get back home. <laughs> <laughs> but I am definitely going to share you with them to yeah. show the, the I, I love the fact that as young people today, you guys are living in your passions and you're, mm -hmm. and you're not afraid to jump out there and do something that's different. Uh, than the traditional and the, and the norm. I have a young, I have, my girlfriend's niece is, um, she loves art. She's an artist, an incredible artist. Yeah. She jumped right out there. She, she didn't go the long route to get to selling her product. She is actually showing all over the world. She's selling her her, her art for 20 grand a piece Ooh. and uh, doing some amazing things. <laughs> and But she was focused on it and she was like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I got to do this while I'm young, right? Yeah. So she, while she's got the, uh, the energy and the, and she's just so passionate about it. She's incredible. I've yeah. gone to a couple of her art shows and she's just magnificent. So I commend you because, you know, our generation, Gilbert and our generation, they were a lot more timid uh, yeah. when living our dreams. Yeah, that's and, true. And using different methodologies. So Right. Yours is not only are you passionate about the the creation, but you also are using it to get as a stepping stone to get to your to your next goal, to your next dream. Yeah, and I'm gonna still be creating content because I really do enjoy this. Um, creating content and the whole fashion and sewing, all the things that I do on my channel, uh, regardless of income, is something that is also therapeutic for me. So it's like mm -hmm. I gotta create. Cause I don't know, my brain might explode if I don't, <laughs> I just got to let it out. And so it's just fun for me, uh, regardless of me sharing it online for the world to see. So yeah, it's just a really great thing that I'm able to do.
Well, yes. awesome. Well, we're definitely cheering you on to be a doctor and uh, uh, Dr. DK. <laughs> hey, she, she might be creating content like uh, a Chicago MD and all that sort of stuff. In Listen, addition. I'm going to be doing surgeries. I'm going to sew you up on the surgery, surgery table yeah. and be creating dresses. What do you uh, mean? <laughs> You know, there's a few doctors right now while they're doing surgery. They've got their camera on and they're, they're walking you. Yeah, they're walking you through the process, you know, and say, hey, now now we're gonna do this and now we're gonna do the sutures. And now, you know, it's it's something and, and, else. Uh, there's a cop, there's a young lady that's on um, I think she's got a YouTube channel or she may Instagram or a TikTok, but she mm -hmm. was an attorney. Yeah. And I think it's YouTube. She was on an attorney and she, you know, attorneys work extremely hard yeah. for, and if you really break down how much money they make, they're, they're making less than minimum wage, man, yeah, because yeah. of the hours that's required. So she wanted to, she, uh, she worked hard. She was like a star in, in the law firm, but it's never like there's enough, right? They, yeah. they, 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 they push the bar up every time you think you got there. Yeah. And she, her father was ill and she got a call to say she had to come right now because he wasn't mm. going to make it. Her boss told her if she left uh, that she and she was uh, she wouldn't make it as a partner because they didn't think mm. she was committed. So she left anyway. And then she came back and she rethought it. And she's like, you know what? I'm going to do something different. So she kind of did is doing what you're doing as an influencer. She goes, that. I'm making more money now yeah. than I make that made as an attorney. Yeah. And I'm enjoying it so much more than that pressure that goes along with that so mm -hmm. um oh i could i felt that because like when i was working <laughs> the uh, minimum wage job <laughs> like <laughs> i over delivered in everything that i did for the company mm -hmm. um like the first week of me working there i made them over a quarter of a million dollars because i was taking what i learned from my college degree into the business mm -hmm. but it's a minimum wage job so i'm like okay if i put a little effort maybe i'll become manager or something so, right <laughs> um, but <laughs> And then it wasn't until the manager called me. They was like, Brittany, you have brung us so much money. We have a gift for you. And I'm rubbing my palms like, ooh, we about to get some money. <laughs> so the boring, gift, man. <laughs> they give me this, this gift card and then I open it. And I was like, oh, Starbucks. Oh, I was making you a quarter of a million dollars. I was like, well, let me be grateful, right? So I was like, let, let me go to the bathroom and see how much is on the uh, card. And I was like, I'll be right back. And I call it. It was five dollars, <laughs> and I was so hurt because I'm like, you guys have made so much money off of me, but I only get five dollars. Yeah, and so wow. it was just a like an eye opener for me because at that point I wasn't full time. So I thought to myself, I really was looking at looking at myself in the mirror. I'm like, girl, if you can make them this much money, why can you not give yourself that same energy? Exactly. And that's when I put in my two weeks. I couldn't wait to leave. And that's they're like, why, please don't leave, Brittany. Please, mm, I gotta that, go. <laughs> that's why. That's why I was telling you earlier. Yeah. When you work for the man, that's yeah. what happened. You work to get them richer. Yep. Right. And and you don't get you get scrapped. So you got to work to get you richer as an entrepreneur, man, and just make it happen. At least they could have given you five dollars a stock. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the five dollars at Starbucks cannot get me a venti caramel frappuccino. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where the stock certificate, dude? <laughs> you gotta buy me some stock. Don't be giving me no coffee. <laughs> I'm with you. I would have left that day. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh change, changed up said that the curries are rooting for you, Doc. Yeah, oh, thank I, I you. Am, I am. <laughs> I am just so impressed with you. Um, and 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 I'm definitely going to show this to my. I'm going to have to send out a, a blast to my students. Yeah. To my, my business owners yeah. who limit their 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 blessings yes. because they stay right here. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I just uh, had a coaching session with a young lady who had that same chutzpah that you have, but she was like ready to give up. And I was like, well, wait a minute. I think you jumped and she did. She was very impulsive when she made certain business decisions yeah. uh, without um, mapping it out. In, fa in fact, the first thing she said to me, she got an opportunity to do a pop up at the Beverly Center. Yeah. And I and, and she's telling me and I'm thinking, 
But the Beverly Center is about as dead as it gets. I mean, what the heck? But she was from back east. She had mm-hmm. no idea yeah. that the Beverly Center gets no people. Yeah. <laughs> and so when she said that, I was like, well, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I'm going to tell you that there should have been more front end research because uh, mm-hmm. whatever the deal was, it wasn't going to map out right because yeah. they just don't. I said, you have been better at the at the growth. Mm-hmm. At least there are thousands and hundreds of thousands of, of tourists that come through. Ain't nobody yeah. going over to the Beverly Center. In yeah. fact, nobody's going to any mall. So, <laughs> I, so I was telling her, I said, you should go back into the pop-up space because you can move around true and and then create a massive following people can follow you there she's got a beautiful clothing line so now she's kind of debating whether she's going to go to atlanta or um miami and she's got a party line it's like well la is not the party place so maybe you should think about atlanta or miami in fact you probably should have thought about that before you came here but it's all about the research right it's Mm -hmm. about understanding your marketplace. And so is that the same in your space? I mean, you were saying the analytics, but how do you know you're creating uh, the content for it? Cause that's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's the worldwide web. So how right. do you know who you're creating this con content for? How do you get that out to that specific target market? Yeah. I think for every entrepreneur or even content creator, start thinking about um, your avatar like what that age is for that person is female, male, and then the region, like the demographic of where they're located or the geographic. So that's where I started. And from there, I use things like Google Trends to see if I'm putting in keywords like fashion, which is for my niche, what are people searching for for fashion? Um, But that's just too too broad. So you got to go a little deeper. Fashion DIYs, what are they looking for? Oh, they're looking for dresses. They're looking for black dresses because it's fall. Like, you know, when you make long tail keywords, you're able to find um, more details, but that's kind of like the starting point of it. And then also looking at questions that people are asking online, whether it's from you or your competitors. So I'm really good at looking at comments from people in my industry and mm-hmm. most of the time, if they have a large following, they don't got time to go through thousands of comments, but I do. So I go through the comments <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's going to be a good video idea. And usually those will be my best performing videos. So that's the way to get started for sure. Oh, so we get where we need to go look at some comments. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What you're looking for, man. <laughs> I, I, am, I am over here taking notes. <laughs> I am, I'm a student today. <laughs> well, we, I'm actually going to sign up with her. So I'm going to be, a, I, wanna, I don't want it on the off side. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be sitting like I tell my own, like I'm that people sit in front of me as a as a uh, being coached. I want to be sitting in front of her being coached. Yeah. Just in what you've said uh, has made so much sense. Yeah, and um, yeah, Gilbert, we got to monetize, man. Oh, and, for sure, for sure. And I was telling Gilbert, you know, for us, we've been working so hard. We both needed to have a book, and yeah. folks have been out there writing books all over the place. Right. And I said, you know, all our shows is actually a book. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. That is true. It sure is. Even if you just took like 30 minutes of it and turned it into a quick ebook, you could be on all different types of marketplaces like Etsy and even on Amazon, you know, just repurposing the content. You already did the work. You don't got to do it twice. You just turn into text. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Yeah. Do you get do you? And I I do know one. And when I've taken a couple of classes, being a guest on other podcasts will let does that actually help grow your channel? Yeah, it does. And it depends on how you're doing it, too. Um, Like on YouTube, for instance, there's this thing called the community tab. And in that tab, you can cross promote other channels. So if you're tagging them, it will let their followers know to go to their channel and vice versa. Um, The other thing, too, is YouTube has this new uh, vertical live streaming. But unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to hook up your mics. But you don't have to. So don't think you always got to be perfect every time you do a podcast. It could just be you jumping on for 10, 20 minutes, just a chat. And with that, it's going to automatically notify the other person's audience that they're live with you. So even if they announced it or not, all of their audience is going to know that they're live on your platform. So it's kind of like Instagram. But it's just so many things you can do to just really grow. And um, that's just a couple of tips. 
Okay, well, we're going to judge. Thank you for those tips. Um, let's see. Uh, Fernando says she is bringing it today. Trust. <laughs> he, he also was figuring that it was very disrespectful for them to give you $5. <laughs> I, I <agree>. Yeah. <laughs> and the curry, yeah. said, the curry said, that's a darn shame. They could have at least gave you a bonus or something. I, <laughs> thought, much. I thought I was going to get a bonus too. <laughs> see, see, Brittany, Brittany, that was necessary though. Oh, it, what? Was, it, it was necessary for them to give you that money because yeah. that's your motivation. That's what motivated you to do the things you're doing. You well, see what it, I mean? it definitely motivated me to leave quicker. I oh, had, yeah. I had oh, an exit yeah. plan because one oh, thing yeah. I told myself is I wanted to have full control of my time and I wasn't happy. Yeah. It was just eating me up inside every time I clocked in, right? Yeah. I'm like, wow, this is very depressing. Yeah. <laughs> and it was more depressing when you're not making enough to take care of yourself. So mm -hmm. my parents were still helping me with like cost of living. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. felt like a burden on them. Yeah. Um, and so they were just like, you know, my mom always trying to make me feel better. Like, baby, you're not a burden. Girl, I'm a burden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a burden. Come on, you my man. mama. You ain't gonna tell me I'm a burden. Okay. I'm a burden. <laughs> and so, um, from that time, um, because one thing I didn't mention is I did take a break from college when I was getting my fashion degree to solely mm -hmm. focus on YouTube for a year. And when mm -hmm. I did that, my dad was like, "What are you doing? Like, who <laughs> does that?" And I was like, "I'm about to do that." And he was like, "I don't understand it, but I support it because he's from Nigeria." And no. when you come to the U.S., it's like you grind and you get your degree, you be successful. But yeah. I'm like, I don't think that's going to be my path, the traditional way, right? Going to school, mm -hmm. get a college degree, hoping I get a good salary job. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I took that break, it was so necessary because I wouldn't known all the things I know now. And mm -hmm. then I've been able to work with YouTube. So it helped a lot. Uh, yeah, that that and and that makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. I, I had an exit strategy. I knew that I was going to be an entrepreneur because I come up from a family of entrepreneurs, and I gave myself a ten year, ten to twelve year uh, 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 goal to be there, and then I was going to exit. But in year five, as I was uh, when I got to ten, it's like okay, I'm gonna do another three, four years. But I got a plan now. I, I executed and I launched my business. And then I was doing it part time. And then I had another big plan. It's like, okay, <laughs> I am becoming, I am the chief influencer in this job right here. And I am going to make sure that they need me. And I am, whenever someone new was hired, they always sent them over to me. So I let that go on for a couple of years and I got bonuses and stuff for all of that. So if, if, if that had not happened, I, this would not have happened. So, <laughs> yeah. so then I went up to my boss and I said, okay, here, I got a proposition for you. They knew I was, that I had my own business because we were like a family by this time. Right. So I said, let me, let me give you a scenario of what a day is like and how I'm going to make you a proposition that you cannot pass up. And <laughs> um, so I told him, I said, so you come in the office, 8.30, and whatever, 8.30, you, you, you walk around the office, you talk to everybody for about 30 minutes, get your mm -hmm. coffee, you pass through everybody's desk, depending how big. And so by the time you really get to your desk, it's nine o'clock, you work into 10, you take that California required break, yep. and then I've been here for 12 years, so you know I'm not coming back in 15 minutes. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then we work for a little while, and then about 11:30, we're gonna uh, go for lunch, and then we'll go to lunch. And you go, I've been here for 12 years, so you know I'm not coming back in an hour and <laughs> for 60 minutes. Then I broke it all down. I said, so when you subtract all of the excess mm -hmm. time that's required by law. That, that's really six hours. So here's the proposal. You become my client. I continue to do what I do for all your new employees that come in. You pay me <laughs> for the six hours. You don't care when I take a break because I'm a contractor yes. now, right? Yep. And he's like, Crystal makes a lot of sense. So my, my, my employer became my client. And what I realized about that was that just changing the definition from employee mm -hmm. or classification from employee to contractor. Yep. Right. The income, the money went sky high and the respect went right there with it. Yeah. Whereas the same information that I was dispelling out every day to everybody, I was an employee. So no respect for me as an employee. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, 
you get respect as an entrepreneur. That's what I'm going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my my exit from corporate America. And, you know, I I went back a couple of times because there were certain skill sets that I didn't want to. There were certain products that I didn't want to pay for. So I went back and worked, gave myself another little time frame. Yeah. And then I exited back out. And once I exited the last time, that was it. I never went back into corporate America. Well, I love that. That's such a boss move. <laughs> 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 but I mean, I, the entrepreneurial spirit was there yeah. and it had been there. So, you know, you just, you, uh, you know, you, 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 they're what we call strategic risks, <laughs> yes. calculated risks. You did the same thing. You had a calculated risk when you, when you stopped school for that year yeah. and then you thought about it. So I am so impressed with you. I'm just, I'm, I'm your, your uh, rah, rah, just like the curries. <laughs> Can't <laughs> wait till you become the doctor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is awesome. Now, are you going to go to med school here or? Um, so the thing about med school is the um, classrooms are very small. So it's not like a university where they take thousands of people. Mm -hmm. It's like only 30 to maybe 100 if you're lucky. So the chances of me going to a uh, med school in California is just little to oh. none. Um, so I'm just hoping to be close to family. Okay. But regardless, I'm not even going to be too pressed about it as long as I'm in med school. <laughs> okay. okay. Do you have a choice? I mean, do you have a preference right now? Yeah, there's a few um, schools in California and then also in Vegas because I'm out here in Vegas right now. Okay. Yeah, so... If I'm able to go somewhere in between, then that'll be great. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're looking for, and what's the specialty? I would love to be a surgeon, okay. an orthopedic surgeon. Okay. All yeah. Right, cool. Well, you're going to make it because you have the, you have the determination and the continuity just <laughs> based upon what you've been doing. What you've been doing is a far harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so impressed with you, Brittany. We, it's just been a wonderful show. Everyone that's here is saying you've just brought it and we've learned so much. And seriously, Gilbert and I are definitely interested in, 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 in becoming uh, students <laughs> so that she, we can. She, she got me quiet over here, man. I'm just listening and learning. Listen, <laughs> I have one tip before, you know, we in my segment. I have a friend that has a bunny rabbit. His mm -hmm. bunny rabbit makes six figures. Okay. His bunny rabbit has a YouTube channel. It's called Benny the Bunny. Okay. His bunny rabbit is so popular that Benny the Bunny is now on Netflix. They have a series called Pet Stars for pet influencers. That's a thing too. Um, and so when I think about entrepreneurs that come to me or even creators and they're like, I'm too tired. I can't create content. I don't have time. I always ask them, are you going to let a bunny rabbit outwork you? Because <laughs> rabbit is consistently showing up every single day for social media. I'm sure the bunny rabbit tired too. Okay, you gotta look at his channel because he's also painting. I've never seen a bunny rabbit paint before. And one thing I talked about was diversifying your income. Not only does he monetize the video, but he's selling the painting that he's making in the video. Wow. <laughs> oh my God! Go and ahead. So he has been able to build up. Quite the resume for a pet bunny. Um, but I think that could be an inspiration for people when they feel lazy, when they feel exhausted, and when yeah. they look at their bank account. Look at Benny the Bunny. Okay, I'm, go I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go subscribe to Benny the Bunny <laughs> to increase, and I'm gonna watch so I can increase his C his CPMs that I yeah. so he can continue to make his six figures. <laughs> well, yeah. Brit Brittany, we definitely appreciate you coming on today. You're this welcome. has been wonderful. And yeah. for those those of you who are tuning in right now, or you tuning in late. This is the business zone. We're on every week. We're on from three to four thirty Pacific time. And uh, if you're, uh, if if you'd like to be on the show, you'd like to be a guest on the show. All you've got to do, Crystal. Crystal will put our information in in the chat. Just reach out to that, and uh, we can get you signed up for the show to be a guest to talk about your business, your products, your services, just like Brittany is right now. And, you know, I, I met Brittany and I was teaching a class there for uh, one of the city programs and Brittany was in that class. 
And that's how I met Brittany. And oh, she okay. she just fascinated me in that class. I'm going, wow, I got to talk to you. I got to get you on our podcast. <laughs> and now she's here, guys, and she's still she's still uh, cranking out nuggets of wisdoms here for us. So, and, uh, and it's so interesting because it's a small world. She she obviously has been watching me, me doing yeah. my thing uh, with the number of organizations that I teach for and her and her sister and was kids, in my class. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, love to have you. You know, once a month we do uh, our fall program. We're doing a business institute, one live and one um virtual so i we, maybe we can coordinate and you can you know talk to the kids for about 10 15 minutes or yeah. you know whatever uh we um and and i think that would be excellent because i think these kids don't even really realize how great this whole they see the influencers they are impressed by it yeah. but they they don't think of it as a business instead they give me lipstick and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lip gloss not even lipstick <laughs> lip gloss and i'm always thinking to change the economics in our community in our black community and brown community we got to do big stuff yeah, <laughs> yeah we do and it's once again a lot of opportunities outside of just creating content just by showing up on social media um there's so many grants out there like if you guys did not know for everybody that's listening youtube have grants for the black and brown community. They have mm. grants for entrepreneurs and they do this every single year. I, um, did not I have know been that. Yeah, they do this. I'll, like you gotta know somebody like me. Look, I'm telling yeah, you. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. And <laughs> Fernando says we're all team Brit right now. <laughs> <laughs> we are claiming you right yes, now. We, we gotta are take advantage you. of all the resources. So once again, they have grants and then also Facebook have grants. They have grants for everything one for mm -hmm. just being black one yeah. is really? like, you know they got yeah. one if you're an entrepreneur like i've been able to be a part of so many programs due to all the different things that i do and one thing i could tell you because i'm pretty sure you heard like facebook or meta charges people 14.99 for the blue check mark i still haven't paid that right oh. but one thing i could tell you is my friends that pay for it they have never been able to talk to anybody at facebook they always talk to a bot but in you the, have <laughs> in the, exactly like when you're in those programs you get to call people on the phone that work at meta you get to go to events that are private like yeah. when you're in the doors of those type of events yeah i always tell people use that as leverage because you never know who you're going to meet like yes. you can have a negative in your bank account but if you meet the right person everything yeah. can change for you that's true. That <laughs> Next is true. five minutes <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes. That well, yeah, true. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Well, I think a lot of people don't know about it, you know. No, I didn't know about either one of those, but we're gonna we're gonna become real close because we're gonna become <laughs> your clients. Well, and, we, we're yeah. gonna become our best friends, and you that you're gonna become life. yes for right for <laughs> sure for sure. Uh, you're getting awesome. some encore in the, in the chat right here. They're saying hey it. encore, so they, they want you back, Brittany. They right. want you back. Uh, uh, down. I'm always Fernand back. Fernando <laughs> says awesome personality and great drive. Michelle says awesome show. Uh, Fernando again smart. Fernando's really uh, infatuated over here. <laughs> and then the Curries are great show encore. Thank you so much. You have done. This has been an, an awesome experience. And um, uh, yeah, let us see. In fact, um, I was just speaking to someone. Uh, Kaiser is um, we're having a they're having a major career fair. Uh, but I have some friends and actually I'm going to do with my other podcast. We do some symposiums, symposiums where we do hybrids in live and online. Mm, yeah. And in February, uh, somewhere next fall, we're going to do a major collab with uh, Kaiser Permanente because they are mm. really about uh, uh, um uh, preventative care for black people and they're really yeah. attentive to and so they're here in los angeles and so we're going to have an open forum with on health care and yeah. and the black people and yeah. and um so maybe we can have you as a speaker or yeah, on our hybrid side so we're we're going to be talking in addition to you helping oh, us monetize sure. I, I, sure. I got a lot of colleagues that i can refer over to you that can help you in your pursuit of your medical career i love it thank you so much i really appreciate that and we were barely scratching on the surface of monetization so we're gonna have to do a part two for sure oh, oh for, for sure, sure. For sure. <laughs> well thank Definitely. you so much you're we welcome been, please it's been an awesome show we and we 
we and we listen, so we're gonna flip that. We're gonna talk later, and we're gonna bring the guests on right away. <laughs> you notice, you notice, we tried it today, right? We, we did, we and did, it worked we, out. Look at the did. great engagement in the comments. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did less of an intro, and now look Just at that. Straight into the yeah. meat and potatoes. So. Meat right. and potato. That's what yeah. we're talking they, about. They can get us when we do a class and session. We got a guest. We're bringing you right on in. <laughs> Well, for those of you who are tuning in, uh, again, as we know, we always have ninja watchers. So ninjas, please go ahead and subscribe. I know there are about 70% of you out there just watching the show, taking in the information, but you're not subscribing. So just go ahead. Don't be a ninja watcher anymore. Just go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> Become one of our favorites. So you can be in the chat also giving your feedback to wonderful guests like Brittany. And also you might be able to come on our show if you're interested. We can bring you on. You can talk about your product. You can talk about your service. You can even speak about yourself as an entrepreneur. So that's what we do here and the business zone. I haven't seen any other podcasts that do what we do here, guys. Not only do we provide you nuggets and information, bringing on interesting guests with, with, with institutional knowledge, but we also teach classes on here. We have class in session. We'll teach you guys a little bit about your bookkeeping. We'll teach you about financial statements. We'll teach you about your back office certification, how to get government contracts, procurement, all of those things. So this is the number one podcast, guys, that you want to do, you want to check out, you want to subscribe to. And of course, Brittany will show us how to monetize it. So, and so Brittany, <laughs> they can go over to your YouTube channel, Dr. Fashion, and, yeah. and catch you. Are you, um, uh, so go there. And if they're interested in taking your course, how do they reach you? Um, yeah, I have a website. It's Creator Life. I know it says the content life here, but it's Creator. Oh, and Creator then, Life. Okay. Yeah, it's Creator Sorry, Life. You can go to our website, creatorlife.com, or you can reach out to me on social media. Uh, my Instagram, I'll probably have to put it in the chat later, but you'll be able to find me if you type up Dr. Fashion on Instagram. Okay. Um, that way you can kind of see my body of work and all the things I've been able to do in the creator space. And it's, life. it's, it's Creator Life, like L-Y-F-E? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yep. I just put it out there. For okay, them cool. So you guys want to go over and follow her. This young lady is on fire. Uh, she is fire. And uh, <laughs> this is incredible. Thank you so much. Thank Gilbert you. and I, uh, we, 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 we bow humbly to you. We yes. learned. Usually yes. people are learning from us, but we've learned a lot from you. Much and, respect. And, much and respect. we have uh, <laughs> uh, accepted that. And, uh, and we're looking forward to doing some work with you and uh, you helping us and becoming a client and that's that's where we are <laughs> right. thank you so much and thank you all for watching i'm about to dip out now and okay. i'm going to be tuned in for the rest of your segment all right uh, bye, -bye. bye guys bye-bye you, you take care Brittany. you too thank you all right gilbert that oh, was man. an excellent that was a, that's an education right there you <laughs> <laughs> just been educated <laughs> <laughs> we have it was awesome okay so we're gonna find out what we need to do we're gonna go over to the creator creator yes. uh, creator, creator, creator life. life and yeah. sign up because i all those little things the monetizing before we even get to our numbers yeah i'm feeling it i'm feeling it i'm feeling yes. it yes 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 yeah so um you were impressed, huh? Because you were I, quiet, I was, man. I, I was super impressed. You know, whenever you see me quiet on this show, I'm learning some stuff. <laughs> I'm learning some stuff. <laughs> well, I am so, thank you, Michelle. I am so happy that you uh, invited her on. And yes. we need to have, we that, that's what we need to do. We're on the right road, man. After yeah. our conversation this morning. Yes. We are on the right road and, and I knew we were heading that way. So now yeah. that's a great validation uh for for us. So before and, we hmm, and like yeah. like like we say, I'm sure there are more of you out there who are you may not be influencer digitally, but you're an influencer in your field, in your space, in the marketplace. Come on the show, be a guest, talk about your products and services. Talk about how you're helping the community, how you're helping your customers, how you're helping the marketplace. Just come on and talk about it. That's what this show is all about, guys. We're showcasing you so others who don't know about you 
can learn about. So I think we need to change up now what podcasters to come on. So yeah. you guys need to reach out. The, the, our email is down in the chat there. Cliff, let, uh, dude, it's been a minute. I know you've actually had another book that came out since the first book. And I yes. know uh, it's been a minute since I've seen you before the pandemic, I think. So please, uh, we'd love to have you on. So reach out to me. You know how to reach out to me. Yes. Um, thank you, Michelle. Um, we're glad to have you drop by. Fernando, man, we've been asking you to come on the show. So I guess when you're ready, uh, yeah, when yeah. you're ready, you will you will come. But yeah, when he's, when he's ready, he'll show up, man. He'll right. show up. <laughs> so Gilbert, I am going to take us out with uh, Small Biz Pro. Because yes. I think it's apropos since that's a yeah. digital project yeah. product. And yeah. um, this has been a fan. I don't think there's anything else we can say. <laughs> no, nothing we can say. Nothing else we can say, man. <laughs> that this was a class been... act, man. Yes. I, I am yeah. just so pleased to have had her on the show. So yes. let us show. Um, uh, let me get rid of. Um, let me change the caption so that. Uh, we can see all right so and then gilbert you can do a little intro afterwards but here you yeah. guys go this is gilbert's product and uh caught small bits pro um is in a phenomenal platform and a phenomenal program uh for you to manage your business and so we need you guys to tap in and follow and uh sign up so here we go but tool that organizes your cut paperwork and takes care of all your record keeping uh oh what happened Oh, wait. Do you have a tool that organizes your company's paperwork and takes care of all your record keeping? Does your current record keeping system send you 90 day alerts to remind you that your key documents are about to expire and need to be renewed? Can you find contracts and procurement opportunities in seconds from any of the 50 United States so you can grow your business? Is your business organized so that you can tell which key documents are needed to efficiently run the business? How about woman-owned, small business, or disadvantaged business enterprise certifications? Do you have a checklist of all the key documents you need to become certified? Does your current system allow you to conduct market research from multiple sources and provide you industry and market data in seconds? Well, Small Biz Pro does all of that and more. Small Biz Pro is the number one business management, compliance, procurement assistance, and market research assistance tool on the market today. Download the app now and you will be amazed. It's like having three additional employees working for you, but you don't have to pay them. What are you waiting for? Okay. <laughs> Hey, that's what we do for you guys. We have this great platform. It's called Small Biz Pro. Get it so you can get your free employees, three free employees. You don't have to pay them. This platform will do the work for you guys. So if you want to make sure you take care of your back office, have all your paperwork in order, your infrastructure is set up properly. Every one of us runs a business, but we're not quite sure what paperwork we need to run that business. This platform will show you exactly what those paperwork should be. And you don't have to think, you don't have to guess, it will provide it for you. And all you got to do is just upload those documents there. So Small Biz Pro, if you want to try it out, you go to www.smallbizpro.net. www.smallbizpro.net. Try it out, guys. All right. So let me do that, smallbizpro.net. All righty. So there you guys go, because you get your free employees. You don't have to pay them. You're free, free, <laughs> free. <laughs> your free, three employees. Uh, change up, indicate. I believe you guys are going to enjoy her because she has a way of breaking things down. Also, I'll be in touch to be a guest. We'd love to have you. So uh, reach out to us. Um, um reach out to us and we'll make sure we get you the information Please thank do. you so much we stream live so you can be anywhere in the country to be on this That's show right. and we will be honored to have you as a guest so and then bring your guests with you yeah. <laughs> all righty gilbert so we're gonna sign off guys it's been a fantastic show thank you so much for joining us have a great weekend is this um a new a Halloween weekend? Yes, I think it is. Yeah. So for those of you, um, 
be safe little... be safe out there guys be safe out there because it is and so i'm going to share us uh this is uh restreams uh, <laughs> version of halloween <laughs> so restream says have a great weekend be safe out there um be careful out there this is a crazy world we live in but we want to wish you guys a, a happy ha a halloween and a great weekend and we will see you next friday we have another another phenomenal guest i believe he's in canada yeah. uh so uh steve Mar martel yeah uh so tune in next week and we'll see you guys then bye-bye as a small biz pro, I saw we roll Using procurement, program and control As a small biz pro, I saw we grow Using procurement, program and control I'm a business man, yes 